Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and um, today I'd like to talk to you about dodging and burning. I know I did a video about it already but um, it was more of a challenge and I find that people still kind of struggle with um, dodging and burning so I thought maybe I should explain myself a bit better. <laughs> so I just want to show you how I dodge and burn, um, what I do and why I do it, um, what is and isn't necessary. Um, and so on. So uh, today I'm going to be working on an image that I did a couple of months ago. Um, it was a part of an editorial I shot. Uh, I have two gorgeous models here um, and I just want to kind of show you how I retouch their skin using dodging and burning. And usually when I dodge and burn I do it in two stages. The first stage is basically fixing any imperfections, any discolorations in the skin. If you see that there is like a darker spot or something, um, you know, like uh, in this image for example, you can see that um, there are some dark circles going on here, there's a slight, um, slight little bit of redness, you know, there's like a bit of a darkness here. Um, the other girl, um, her skin is a bit blurred, or she's a bit blurred, but uh, you can still see a tiny bit of a dark circle, a um, tiny bit of like kind of weird shadows that I would like to get rid of. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go out, alt new layer, um, I can touch, I can call it dodge and burn. Dodge and burn. Um, okay, so mode um, soft light. And then we click fill with soft uh, light neutral color 50% gray. Okay. And um, now this is something that isn't necessary and I think the last time I did it, I didn't really explain it and I think a lot of people got confused. Um, the next two steps are only to help you or you know guide you through dodge and burn. Um, they don't necessarily change anything in the methods as such. Um, they don't do anything to dodge and burn. Um, they just help you see where the dodge and burn is needed. So I'm going to create a black and white layer. I won't change anything, I'll just press it as it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and create curves layer. And for the curves, I'm dragging it down and then pulling it upwards. Okay. So, what that does, I'll put it into a group so you can see. What that does basically is it shows you much better where the dodge and burn is needed. Because as you see, you can see um, much more, you know, darkness on their faces. Um, you can see kind of the dark circles much more, any kind of spots that need to be removed. Um, I'll show you a little bit, I'll switch it off here. So you can have a look. You know, you can see that when you have it on, you can see so much more in the dodge and burn. So that's the only reason I have it on. It's not necessary. You don't need it for your dodging and burning. If you feel like it's too many steps and you're getting confused, just skip it. The, uh, you know, the 50% gray layer by itself is perfectly fine. It's just, especially when you're starting with dodging and burning and maybe you're not sure about what you're doing, this is a nice way to guide you through it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the group on. Um, I usually keep the group on for um, for the skin fixing part and then I switch it off when I apply highlights and shadows because I just don't find it necessary. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put down my flow to one. I'm going to grab my white brush because I'm going to um, fix the darker parts of the skin first. And I'm just going to make the brush smaller and just slightly start going over the area of the skin that needs to be fixed. I think the point of the two layers that we put up is that the skin looks worse than it actually is because it makes you more aware about where the parts um, are that need to be fixed. So this way I can see that there is a tiny bit of um, darker kind of red area here. I can't see the red, but I can see the dark. Um, so in this way, um, it's much more 
it's much easier to even the skin out and um, as you will see yourself in a minute the skin will look nice and even and when the skin looks nice and even in the rough edit of the skin it will look so much better uh, when you switch the layers off as well As you see, the skin is looking so much better already. You don't really need much here. You're literally just going over the skin with the brush um, on a low opacity and that's it. So obviously when it comes to dodging burning, um, it all depends about how far you want to go with it. Um, you can be quite natural with it. You can go quite heavy with it. It's kind of like using a concealer almost. Um, so it's entirely up to you. Um, you can leave it very natural. You can just fix small little things with it. You can only use it to hi uh, highlight and shadow. That's perfectly fine as well. I just find it's a very nice way to fix the skin without changing the texture. Um, you know, another way you can go about it is um, frequency separation, but I just, I'm just i just not a very big fan of it, and I think it's a bit over overcomplicated for what it is anyway. So I would definitely be all for the gen the gen burn. Okay. Now this most skin is fixed. I'll just move on to Louise. She has a bit of a dark circle here. So anywhere that you see that the skin needs a bit of lightening, you basically just go over it. Also, when you're dodging and burning, it's always a good way to kind of uh, come in and out of the layers the two layers here, just deselect them and you know just kind of have a look at how everything looks because sometimes you can go a bit too far without realizing so it's always good to kind of keep checking on the work. Okay so I'll switch it off as you see the skin looks quite smooth I'll show you before and after. So um, when I switch it off you see I got rid of all the dark spots here um, any you know dark circles so it does a great job. Um, that's pretty much it. You don't need to use, um, you know, any brushes afterwards. Sometimes I also like to switch the group off um, just to kind of have a look at how everything looks. Because um, sometimes, you know, you can miss things even if the group is on or sometimes the group kind of, you know, stops you from seeing it. So it's always good to kind of um, just switch stuff off and just have a look at the image. I'm just kind of loosely going over it, over the areas that I think still need a bit of fixing. Okay, so that's pretty much it when it comes to skin fixing. Now I'm going to actually move on to her hands as well. Or her hand, just to kind of brighten the tiny bit because it seems a bit dark. So um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do highlights. So I'm going to create a new dodge and burn layer just for the highlights. So again, um, soft light, full of wood soft neutral color, 50% uh, gray. Okay, um, I'll just leave it out. I could call it highlights and shadows, but I mean, it's just save time. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Maybe put the flow up to two. Um, so again, where you see any natural um, kind of highlights that the face catches, just go there and and exaggerate it basically. So on the nose, on the cheeks, um, on Cupid's bow. Again, as I mentioned in the previous video, um, if you're into makeup, it's kind of like highlighting, contouring. Um, you know, with makeup, um, it's the same kind of thing. 
where you just um, apply the highlight where it hits your face naturally. So let's say the brow bone here. I think cheeks are usually the main thing. I think they're very important because it's always the nice natural glow uh, when the light heat your, hits your cheek. So, kind of the tiny bit on the hand as well. Nothing too extreme. You just want a tiny little um, highlight. Usually when I highlight, I go in uh, very thin streaks, as you see, and I just kind of build it up because it kind of um, gives this natural kind of effect of this like build up of highlight. Okay, um, I think that's enough highlight. Now I'm going to go with the eyebrow and I'm going to go into um, adding shadows now because I think there is enough highlight for now anyway. So I'm just going to fill in the eyebrow ever so slightly. It's not going to be major, it is needed, but um, just a tiny bit. going to add a tiny bit on the eye, just a tiny bit, just to add a bit of drama to the lashes. Again, Louise's face is quite blurred, so there's no point in doing much there. I might actually add a tiny bit of darkness to the eyebrows, but um, it's nothing major. Now, I feel like I did go overboard slightly with the eyebrow. Um, it looks a bit bushy. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab a mask and just grab a black brush and just mask out the area on the brow that I feel that is too strong. I might put up the flow a tiny bit for this one. Okay. It's very subtle. So as you see, there's quite a bit of highlight added. Um, now also I'm going to add highlight to here. And now I'll add some shadows as well. It always gives the hair um, a very nice feel and it adds a bit of contrast as well. So it's always a nice thing to kind of do, you know, with the hair. Um, it always makes it look very healthy and shiny and so on. So, okay. Now that I have that done, as you can see. So what I'll do, I'll put the two dodge and burn layers into a group just to show you what we did. So as you see, with what, just one tool, the difference is quite drastic. I think it's quite good. Um, you can see the difference is really, really big. Um, I didn't use a single, you know, stamp tool. I didn't use a patch tool, nothing like that. Um, so as I said, the results are great. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to finish the image. So I'm just going to do um, contrast curves and so on. And then I'm going to show you the final image. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I just added um, two curve um, layers just to kind of um, balance the light. Or, you know, the highlights and the shadows, I think it needed a bit more contrast. Um, so that's what I did. Now I'm on selective um, color. I just want to make her face look a tiny bit warmer because it looks a bit bluish. Um, so I'm just going to white because her face looks quite pale. Um, and I'm increasing the yellow a tiny bit. Now I'm going to go to blacks. Um, I might add a tiny bit of blue in the blacks. I think it always looks very nice. Just something very, very subtle, so nothing too extreme. I might add a tiny bit of magenta to my um, shadows as well. And then the neutrals, um, the image, the, the skin feels slightly reddish, so I might go a tiny bit green. Minus two is fine. Okay. So as you see, there's a slight bit of a difference because um, she feels very. Um, 
magenta reddish on her face um, and now it's kind of nice and neutralized so it's nice and uh, yellowish as it should be and here again I'm going to show you the dodge and burn the difference it makes as you see it's huge and it's such sim simple adjustments and they do so much um, actually I'm just going to go back to um, highlights and shadows I'm just going to highlight the eye a tiny bit I don't want to go too extreme because then it's going to look fake but um, I think it's going to look quite good now no, just doing Okay, now I'm going to go back to the main layer and I'm just going to delete and get rid of a couple of the little imperfections that I see. I'll just use a healing brush. Okay, so here it is. Again, without touch and burn, with touch and burn. As you see, massive difference. Now, um, let me show you the entire before and after. So with slight adjustments and just touch and burn, um, you get a completely different image, completely different image quality. I think it looks great. Um, it's very simple. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching me. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and please let me know what would you like to see next and I will see you next time.